name is Eva and welcome to this channel. Today I'm going to be answering three big relationship questions using social psychology and research. So let's jump right into it. So the first question I'm going to be answering is, does distance make the heart go fonder? If you have not seen my previous video about the social psychology of relationships, which Card right here, you should go and watch it, it's pretty cool. I talked about how social psychologists think of relationships as kind of like a balance between costs and benefits. And when the benefits outweigh the costs, then the relationship's doing well, and if it's the other way around, then it's not doing so well. And if we think about this question, does distance make the heart go fonder in terms of costs and benefits? What's actually beneficial is being physically close to the person that you're into, excited about. You get those warm feelings in your stomach, you get butterflies, it's super exciting. That's what's rewarding and beneficial. And that stuff goes down when you're far apart from the person that you like. I'm not saying that long distance relationships can't last. We actually have a bunch of awesome technology to kind of simulate closeness that we never had before. FaceTime, Skype, texting, all of that stuff can help you feel like you're close by and get all those benefits and rewards and happy feelings that can help make your relationship better. So the second question I'm going to answer is, do opposites attract? So this is a pretty common adage, it's said a lot, but there's actually not a lot of research to it. So we do see that people do tend to be initially attracted to people that are different than us, often because we want to acquire those traits. For example, an introvert wanting to learn how to be more extroverted, but if we go back to looking at a cost and benefit model, we see that arguing with someone doesn't feel good and rewarding the same way that having someone agree with you does. So to finish answering this question, I want to end on a theory that I want to share with you, first because of its swanky name and also because it's interesting. It's called Family's Fatal Attraction Theory, and it says that the opposite trait that you were initially attracted to in the person is going to be the trait that is fatal for your relationship. So does not bode super well. But before you start questioning everything you know, uh, there's a difference between opposite traits and complementary traits. There are traits that are kind of different on the surface, but uh, complement each other. So someone who is kind of more talkative versus someone who's more quiet. These are different traits, but they complement and work well together. The last big love question I'm going to answer is, does love last? So, to answer your question with another question, what type of love are you talking about? So, social psychologists, one of the theories that we use to talk about love is the triangular theory of love. Dr. Joe over at Explanations actually did a super awesome video about that, which I will link here and down below, but I'll just give you a little bit of a rundown. So, according to the theory, there are three parts of love to try triangle. It's called the triangular theory of love. There is intimacy, um, passion, and commitment. And if you combine these parts in different ways, you get different types of love. So in the Western world, when we think about love, the type of love we're actually thinking about is consummate love. It has all three, intimacy, passion, and commitment. So does consummate love last? Not necessarily. If you're with someone for a really long time, it kind of flows into being more of a companionate love. So you do kind of lose that passion and fire and kind of having sex all the time. This is the kind of love people are talking about when they talk about that they married their best friend and that your partner's in life. So you might be asking me, Eva, does this mean that when I get married, I'm never gonna have sex again? And I'll say no to you. So there's a couple reasons why this happens. Um, like the fantasy, the idea that you have of this person in your head can fade, arousal can fade, it isn't as new anymore. So if you want to kind of keep that passion alive, you can target those areas and do things that are new and exciting. However, it is interesting to think about how we place such a emphasis on the idea of this type of love with sex and intimacy and commitment as more important and like the only legitimate type of love over other types of love. Uh, as well, I will link um, a couple more researchers and papers on kind of how to keep the love alive because I don't know a whole bunch about this, but it's super interesting and uh, it's really cool to learn more about. So that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe if you aren't already. Give it a thumbs up if you did like it and comment about what you thought. I hope I didn't ruin your idea of love too much and have a lovely day. So, oh no. Oh, every time. Um, don't remember what I was gonna say.